Thank you very much. Um, and to Delft, uh, thank you for the opportunity to present um, at this forum. Um, I just wanted to put my camera on and say a warm welcome to everyone and so that we could uh, see uh, uh, each other uh, face to face. Um, next slide, please. As uh, has been described, um, although we've made strides, um, as noted in the WHO Global TB report in 2023, um, there are still um, a major gaps um, in the number of individuals that are diagnosed or reported. Uh, if you click next, please. So of the 10.6 million people that are estimated to have fallen ill with TB, there's still one in three. Um, that is an extremely large number of 3.1 million people globally. And, and if we are to find uh, these patients uh, will need optimum screening and diagnostic strategies and tools um, if we're going to uh, implement strategies to, to end TB. Uh, next slide, please. And one aspect of um, our strategies uh, to try and end TB is to take diagnostics out of the clinic and to put it into the community. And this is um, by finding what we call the missing millions um, as well as those who are probably infectious um, and, and driving community-based TB transmission. And this is even more pertinent when one considers that um, almost half of all TB um, in this setting um, is, is subclinical. Um, and for those that are, are, are unsure on, on the term, subclinical TB is, is TB that is microbiologically proven um, or positive, um, but participants are asymptomatic. Of course, subclinical TB is a, is a very important topic at the moment, um, and I don't think there's one definitive definition at this point um, with very much um, with variance on what considers uh, symptoms. Is it specifically symptoms related to uh, the WHA4 symptom screening? Um, or does other symptoms like shortness of breath or fatigue, should they also fall into, into TB uh, symptoms? So I think it's an important uh, topic, uh, maybe a, a separate presentation on itself, just on, on subclinical TB. Um, but again, it, it makes it uh, crucial for us to find uh, the subclinical TB um, individuals um, if we're ever going to, to, to curb community-based transmission. Uh, next slide, please. And so what we've done at our unit at the, at the Center for Lung Infection and Immunity um, with many collaborators um, is, is to draft uh, and develop a, a model uh, which we have noted as, as expert orientated active case finding for TB or the exact model. Um, and this has been coming on for uh, over a decade um, where we've tried to establish this active case finding strategy um, by taking diagnost screening and diagnostics into the community in an active case finding strategy. And so the first study uh, was conducted in uh, 2011 to 2015, which is known as the exact one study, uh, where we just wanted to prove the concept. Um, and we established or, or conducted a randomized control trial uh, where we fitted a um, point of care uh, battery operated exact uh, uh, um, expert uh, system uh, into a truck with a generator. And you can see we screened um, almost 5,000 people in South Africa and Zimbabwe and found this to be a very uh, important strategy where we detected almost 10% of TB um, in those with symptoms or, or HIV. Um, and the study we, we published in, in the Lancet Infectious Diseases, uh, if you can click next. We then took the model further um, and we wanted to demonstrate the efficacy of this scalable model of a uh, portable and uh, mobile expert system where we could go into the into these um, high burden communities. Um, and in the exact two study, um, <clears throat> which was uh, conducted in 2016 to 2020 and, and recently published um, in Nature Medicine, uh, we found it uh, that screening over 5,000 people actually, we increased our detection rate. Um, and importantly, expert itself detected almost all probably infectious TB. Um, I'll come back to probably infectious TB because, again, just like subclinical TB, it, it um, on one concrete definition of what infectious TB uh, constitutes. Um, I'll come back to that. And we can click next. And a ongoing study, the exact three study, um, has now 
uh, try to validate um, the feasibility and, and the impact of this validated um, exact model. And this is a study um, which is now coming to the tail end. Um, as you can see, um, we, we rapidly screened almost 17,000 people um, in four sub-Saharan African countries. Um, and, and this will be an important uh, study uh, to, to show that this model is both feasible and has a major impact um, in detecting TB and, and likely probably infectious TB. Uh, we can go uh, next slide, please. So we know that there have been rapid advancements um, in radiological uh, TB screening, um, and it has evolved from, from the old analog system um, to computed systems to now digital systems. Um, how, even through these advancements, there are still some drawbacks. Uh, we know that there's expertise and infrastructure required um, and inter and intra reader variability, uh, not to mention the, the radiation exposure um, that, that needs to be uh, considered um, when implementing this in, in any um, active case finding strategy. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, but we're very excited, and I think the whole community is, is excited in that they, the advancement of radiological technologies have gone so far and so quickly um, that we have ultra portable chest X-ray systems and now, as we know, AI-driven computer-aided detection. Um, very briefly, I know this is a Delft webinar, but just for, for everyone, we know that CAD is an AI-driven system um, that's based on, on deep learning neural networks that interpret abnormalities on chest X-rays. And these abnormalities um, are noted as either suggestive of TB or not, uh, usually expressed as, a, as an abnormality score in the case of, of uh, CAD for TB is zero to 100. Um, and that is deemed positive or negative if it's above or below a pre-calibrated threshold. Um, so although chest X-rays are, are extremely uh, sensitive, um, and this has been shown in, in decades of work, we still require confirmation or microbiological testing to confirm the TB diagnosis. And that's unfortunately due to its low specificity, especially in a country like South Africa, um, where levels of, of history of previous TB is very high. Um, it also adds further uh, complexity when you, when you have a, a very high HIV uh, or TB burden as well, uh, where HIV can have atypical uh, radiological features. Um, and so this, this begs further questions. Um, we know that expert in this setting, in this community-based setting, is an imper uh, imperfect diagnostic. Um, in, our, in our exact two study, we showed expert sensitivity of around 50% in culture positive uh, TB. Um, and furthermore, there, there are individuals with a chest X-ray suggest of TB, but have negative microbiology. Um, again, there's lots of modeling work, uh, transmission modeling work to show that um, th there's a subset of patients that, are, that fall into this group where the chest X-ray is suggestive of TB, have a negative expert and or culture, um, but months or, or years down the line uh, will develop uh, active symptomatic TB. So how do we incorporate these important aspects into clinical practice and uh, policy decision making? Um, there are other uh, additive questions as well. Uh, what role does computer aided detection, um, how does it fit into uh, an active case finding strategy? For example, our exact model, is it feasible? Is it cost effective? Um, uh, next slide, please. Okay, the next. And so we conducted, firstly, um, a, a systematic review um, to try and find out what the diagnostic accuracy of CAD is in pulmonary TB in Africa. Uh, it, there have been um, uh, multiple publications, and it has been established that CAD is, is, uh, uh, has very high accuracy, but most of these have been done in passive case finding, which, uh, in other words, uh, individuals who attend healthcare facilities, uh, which is a very different population um, populational characteristics of, of, of a community-based uh, setting um, where we believe uh, a large amount of transmission occurs. Um, and so, uh, next slide, please. So we found that um, in our uh, systematic review that, that it, it almost met um, WHO uh, target profile, uh, which um, is a sensitivity of 90 and specificity of 70. 
Um, however, of all the studies, there was a large uh, or a high level of, of, of bias um, and applicability concerns. And, and the most important one, which I think has been uh, spoken about or spoken to for, for, for a number of, of uh, years now is such large prevalence surveys or active case finding strategies um, to mitigate costs, to mitigate resources, unfortunately, uh, are not able to microbiologically test everybody. Um, and so usually what would happen is you would only test those that have symptoms um, or those that are, uh, are shown to have an abnormal chest X-ray, either by a human reader or by um, a CAD analysis. Uh, next slide, please. And so our main project now um, moving forward is, is Exact 19. Um, and I just want to spend a few minutes on uh, uh, describing our study and our project that is currently ongoing. Um, Next slide, please. This is a, a busy slide. Uh, this is our study overview. Uh, I just wanted to very briefly show you on the, um, the aims and, and aspects of the study that we want to include. We've incorporated a randomized control trial um, that will determine the utility of CAD as a triage tool uh, to, to optimize this exact model. Um, you can see in the slide where uh, Again, going into three sub-Saharan African countries uh, in, a, in an active case finding, community-based active case finding um, setting, um, rapidly screening a large number of, of patients uh, to include high-risk individuals. Um, and we believe that high-risk individuals are not just symptomatic or HIV. Uh, there have been data coming out of other risk factors for TB, including, of course, contacts, uh, diabetes, history of previous TB, so we're including these, these patients as well into this uh, randomized control trial. We also wanted to look at how does CAD, uh, what's the value of CAD uh, in, in screening um, healthy individuals, individuals with no risk factors at all. Um, and that is something that we will be looking into as well. And of course, um, we were predominantly speaking on TB at the moment, but we did have a, a, a COVID-19 aspect since the, the trial started and was um, subject to multiple delays, as I'm sure other projects were due to, due to, the, to the pandemic. Uh, but we're also focusing on how um, other tools such as CAD for COVID um, uh, can, can impact this, this active case finding strategy. Uh, next slide, please. So very briefly focusing on the, on the RCT, um, again, I, I mentioned the, the different groups or high risk groups that we believe are an important uh, group of individuals to, to screen um, and to truly understand uh, the impact that CAD can have um, on these uh, individuals in, in, in these low uh, resource, high burden uh, communities. And so we randomized participants or eligible participants into either two arms. Arm one would be CAD plus expert. And, and very similarly to previous studies, we're doing um, an expert um, uh, as the as the confirmatory diagnostic, um, if those uh, individuals are CAD positive, um, compared to just experting uh, the individual, and we want to see um, how does CAD based triage when, when used in tandem with expert. We want to see does it have an improved TB yield? Is it feasible? And is it more cost effective um, compared to an expert alone strategy? And we predict that CAD would pre-select a group of participants who are more likely to have active TB. Um, through confirmatory testing and thus increase TB yield um, in addition to reducing the need for, for uh, expert testing. Um, our, our primary outcome for this study um, is time to detection. Um, and although we chose this, this primary outcome as um, point of care expert, although specific has suboptimal sensitivity in this setting um, as, as described, um, and thus, the addition of CAD to this algorithm will not only improve sensitivity, uh, but assist in targeting and reduce costly resource requirements um, to a smaller, scalable, and more manageable group of participants um, who are more likely to have um, TB. Uh, next slide, please. This is our brief setup. Um, this is uh, our setup in, in one of our sites in, in, um, in Zambia on the left. Um, and on the right, uh, this is done in, in Cape Town as well. As you can see, we're using the um, Delft um, Ultra, uh, which is ultra, port ultra portable expert system. Um, we're able to set up pretty much in, in, in any uh, location. Um, 
with the, the detector attached and uh, securely uh, attached. And then you can see in the background on the left with the CAD uh, laptop and, and CAD analysis running. Of course, everything is battery operated. We conduct everything offline, uh, which makes it much easier to, to target the individuals um, in the community um, that are likely uh, transmitting disease um, and are part of that missing millions um, uh, in, in, in the community. Uh, next slide, please. So very briefly, I just wanted to show you a couple of case studies um, on how this can impact um, uh, the, the community and individuals at large. Here's a 37 year old male. He is completely asymptomatic. Uh, he has a history of previous TB, but he's HIV negative. His initial expert negative, and he is also smear negative. Uh, next slide, please. You can see this is his chest X-ray uh, reported as normal by the human reader. Next, please. And his CAD for TB um, analysis uh, shows a score of 21.72. Next, please. His culture after four to six weeks comes back as positive. Um, and in the South African site, um, one of our uh, aims is to also conduct uh, PET CTs um, to better understand the sensitivity of CAD um, and its discriminatory value uh, when compared to a more sensitive tool like PET CT. So, if you can go next slide. So, this individual, although normal appearing X ray with a relatively low score, um, was culture positive and showed on the CT uh, to have thin walled cavities, um, as shown on, on, on the slide. You can go to the next uh, slide, please. So, again, a 35 year old female asymptomatic, now no history of, of TB, HIV negative, a, a relatively healthy individual. Her um, expert came back positive, is very low, and the smear was negative. Uh, slide, please. Again, here you can see the chest X-ray, and this time it was noted as probable active TB by the human reader. Next slide. You can see that the CAD for TB score was much higher, as you can see on the heat map with the, the CAD for TB analysis showing um, abnormalities suggestive of TB. Uh, next slide. Her culture came back positive as well. And you can, uh, next slide. Once again, you can see multiple apical cavitating nodules bilaterally and a thick walled cavity uh, in the left lower lobe. So these two cases are examples of relatively asymptomatic healthy individuals um, that are examples of probably infectious TB, as we know that cavitary disease um, is, is a proxy for infectiousness, um, who had likely not attended healthcare facilities and were only detected through community-based active case findings, such as our, our exact um, strategy. Um, this is, this is uh, really important, not just for the community, for policymakers, but also for the individuals um, who would, and their families who would be in the community uh, transmitting disease, um, potentially transmitting disease uh, without uh, ever being diagnosed or reported. Uh, next slide, please. Of course, there are challenges in implementing such a study um, and such a project. Uh, the first, of course, are regulatory approvals. Um, this is one of the first studies to include an ultra portable X-ray system in, in, in our country, in South Africa, um, obtaining approval for, for novel and screening uh, novel screening and diagnostic devices are often, often onerous and challenging, um, but I think the benefits always outweigh um, the, the administrative work to try and get these uh, uh, devices approved and used, um, firstly, in, in a research capacity, but with the goal to implement it um, uh, uh, pragmatically. Uh, next slide. We also have patient-related challenges. Of course, this is a vulnerable population. These are uh, low resource communities, high levels of poverty, and in South Africa, a very high burden of, of HIV. And these uh, diseases are, although strides have been made, are still stigmatized um, to individuals. Um, and these are important considerations to have. We also have a, uh, uh, concerns or difficulties in, in follow-ups and treatment uptake. Again, I think this is a, uh, for, for another presentation where we could discuss this at length um, with re relating to the patient-related challenges of, of, of the community and the setting. Um, detecting these patients is one thing, but how do you ensure that they are uh, referred for treatment, that treatment is being initiated, that treatment is being carried out um, over, over months? Um, and then next slide. And then, of course, there are um, 
technical aspects as well. As well, of course, training needs to be conducted um, at a project like this. Um, training has to occur at all sites. Um, there is radiation exposure. However, we have seen studies show that ultra portable X-ray units have very low levels of radiation. However, it is important to still consider this. Um, for example, another a practical aspect would be to have uh, pregnancy testing conducted uh, um, before any x-ray is taken for, for any females. I mean, these are important things that might go uh, seem intuitive, but, but when actually doing it on the ground um, needs quite a bit of thought. The x-ray system itself, uh, we have one of the older generation um, uh, Delft Ultras. Um, I know Delft has done fantastic work um, in, in uh, advancing the, the Ultra uh, to having fewer cables, the charging system, the offline connections, the CAD uh, uh, connectivity. Um, and we look forward to, to working with Delft on, on, on of the new technological advancements as well. And then finally, we've also found an, uh, with, the, with the early versions of the Ultra to have limited um, kilo voltage, which, which um, in our setting where we also have uh, larger BMI patients, uh, very tall patients, uh, it sometimes causes errors, um, which we perhaps might be due to BMI, the environment of some sort. Of course, this is, this is something that we're looking into. We've been in discussion with, with Delft as well. Um, and, and, and it's very important information, um, not as in research, but also for, for, for the company um, to have these, these things highlighted um, so that it can be addressed for, for, for future uh, use. Uh, next slide, please. Finally, uh, I just want to go through some of the strengths of our project, um, which, of course, uh, are something that are very important to us, is that we're contributing important and novel data on the pragmatic use. Um, of ultra portable x-rays as well as CAD um, during this very important community-based active case finding strategy. Uh, next slide. We are uh, aiming and plan to detect not just active TB, but also subclinical TB as well as probably infectious TB, uh, which is uh, quite high uh, in, in the community. Uh, next slide. Uh, and the next slide as well. And what's very important is, is not just working with the patients, uh, working with um, institutions, but it's also working with uh, individuals on the ground, not just the patients, but those that live around and with those patients. So we engage uh, quite uh, a lot with our community leaders, our community advisory boards, which, which provide invaluable insight um, and assistance in, in, in locating either these hotspots uh, uh, of, of TB, but also in, in locating, for example, family members, household contacts, um, uh, difficult to reach areas. Um, so it's very important uh, to, to have this knowledge as well. And then finally, providing vital information to, to screening strategies and national TB programs uh, to improve policy and practice. And next slide, please. Uh, and we can click twice again. So there's still a major gap in the global TB burden. We know that there are one in three that are not diagnosed or reported. Um, however, there have been major advances in radiological screening with both ultra portable X-ray and CAD. And we believe by optimizing active case finding strategies, for example, our exact model using these tools, um, it, it may be a key strategy to detecting TB and interrupting uh, community-based TB transmission. Uh, next slide, please. And finally, of course, this is not, uh, this is always a team effort. Um, I, I'm the site PI for the South African site, but we have the uh, other sites uh, in Zambia, Professor Helen Ailes from Zambard and Dr. Junior Matvangwa from the uh, BRTI in Zimbabwe, and then our global PI, which is uh, Professor Kirtan Dada, um, who oversees the entire project. Um, of course, all the research teams, the partners and collaborators, our participants, um, and this uh, funder of uh, EDCP, EDCTP2 uh, program, uh, which of course, none of this would be possible without the funding and support of them. Uh, thank you very much for your attention, uh, and I'll be happy to take questions at the end. Thank you, Dr. Scott. It was very insightful. Uh, just a quick reminder to everyone before I introduce the next speaker. Uh, please put your questions in the Q&A panel so that our team and panelists can not only answer you right away, but also take it up in the end at the Q&A session. Now, moving on. Next slide, please. 